Okay, welcome back. This uh, segment, this class that we're going to do is focused on yoga for when you need to practice after you've been traveling and you're in a small room. You don't have any props. Okay, so I'm focusing on just the prop of the wall. And of course, you'll have a chair. If there's a desk there, there'll be a chair. If you don't have a chair, then okay. Um, no blocks, no straps. If you have those things, then you can use them. But so this whole sequence will be without that. So thinking about lower back, necks and shoulders, you've been sitting on a plane, uh, opening through the front body, getting extension through the spine. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. Okay, so first we'll start. I'll assume that you just came from, a, came from long travel. And the first thing that you can do is just bring your legs up the wall. So you come to the side of the wall, bring one hip up the wall. So I have my left hip up the wall, and then I'll bring my legs in. Okay, so you can just bring your hips all the way to the wall and then straighten your legs. If that's difficult, then just come a little bit away from the wall and <clears throat> adjust your shoulders, shoulder blades down, just bring your arms out to the side, and then just feel that the weight of the legs are moving down into your lower back. So your tailbone is moving toward the wall. You're, that means your lower back is extending away from your upper back. And then you feel even on both sides. And that weight of the legs is a nice feeling on the lower back. So just let the abdomen release down. You can take the arms, roll the shoulders out. You can bring the arms out, depending on how much space you have. And then you can also bring the legs a little bit wider. You can use the hands at the wall, press the hands to the wall, press the hands into the thighs, legs to the wall. I'm just doing this either the beginning of your practice or the end of your practice or any time that you feel tired. You'll be in a small space, maybe working, maybe going to different locations, walking a lot. So just allow time to relax the legs. And then you can bring the legs into Baddha Konasana here. So bringing the feet towards one another and use the hands, not so much on the knees, but onto the middle of the thigh, the upper thigh, just allowing that external rotation to come. And as the thigh rotates, the tailbone, the buttocks moves down. So you feel that length coming through your whole lower back. And then you can take your feet down depending on your body and what kind of space you have in the hips, what kind of mobility, just be there. And then you can take your hands over your head, reach your arms out, and as you move your hips to the wall, lift your shoulders, so unhook your shoulders in case you're caught, lengthen. If you don't have a yoga mat, then you can use a towel on the floor. Lengthen. If you have your mat with you, all the better. Reaching your arms up. And then change the crust on the fingers. Bring the arms up and over again. Now, if it's difficult for you to extend the arms or interlace the fingers, just take the hands so that the thumbs are on the floor, fingers are moving away from you, palms facing one another. You can also cross the arms, 
If that's difficult, if your shoulders are tight, you can also have a pillow there. So you can take one of your pillows that they have there, raise your arms up a bit, and then extend the arms again. Let's take the legs out, upavista, and then bring your, change the cross on the arms. So your toes are active, you're lengthening through the back of the leg, drawing the kneecap up. You can bring the legs back up. Just allow yourself to be here. You can stay in this position as long as you want, and you can do this at any time. All right, so now we're going to come down, bend the knees, bring the knees, hug the knees into the chest. And here, interlace, or just hold on to the hands at the tops of the shins and bring the thighs toward the, toward the abdomen. Let the whole lower back lengthen. And then if it's easier to interlace your fingers, take your fingers and move your arms and hands down to the middle of the shin. As you exhale, release the abdomen down. That will come, you'll come to a, a different spot in your back, so observe where you can feel that. So if you've been sitting during the day for long periods or on a plane or in small spaces, this would be a nice release for the back. All right, now you're going to roll to your side and press yourself up. And when you come up, you're going to come onto the knees, onto the fronts of the ankles, and bring your toes back. So you're coming into Vajrasana. Since you might not have any support, um, you can go into Barvajasana, but if you don't have that support, it will be more difficult. So sitting on the heels, having a little bit of height, and we're going to do just a gentle twist here at the wall. So. The thighs, the shins, the ankles, the feet, all your foundation moving downward. And then you're lifting up, lengthening, using that inhalation to lengthen. Just turn your shoulders and your fingers, fingertips at the wall. Descend the tailbone, inhale, lengthen up, exhale, turn. So you're turning from this right back waist. And then as you take a couple breaths with that length, Exhale again, and then inhale. So each time, you're moving up a little bit higher, getting that broadness and width across the back, using your fingertips pressed away from the wall, but you're pressing toward the wall at the same time. So just determine which shoulder is moving toward the wall. That one is going to be moving back, the other shoulder and shoulder girdle moving forward. And then release, come back to the center, and you'll turn to do the other side. So just adjust your position, sit back on your heels, and have the distance that you need. So if that was too close for you and you were leaning into the wall, be about a foot away. So you take your fingertips onto the wall, inhale, lengthen up, first establishing that length. From the f opposing action of downward descending, we'll lift up. Inhale, exhale, turn. So using your hands on the wall in a way that's best for you to be able to lift up and turn. And then you'll release. OK, from here, you'll sit and you'll face the wall. Bring your toes to the wall. And turn your toes so that your toes are stretching away from you. Bring your heels to touch one another. So you're coming into Baddha Konasana again. And you're using the hands behind you to come closer to the wall. So as you press the heels, the mounds of the feet, lengthen the inner legs. 
Lift up from the lower back. Bring that back body forward toward the wall. Get a little bit of concave back there, lifting the chest. Keep the arms extending down into the fingertips as you lift up. Roll the shoulders away. All right, and then come away from the wall a little bit. Stay in Baddha Konasana. And now you'll move forward. So take your hands on the wall. Walk the hands up the wall. Press the feet together. Lengthen the inner legs. And reach the arms up. Stay for a few breaths. Moving that back body toward the wall. And then come out. Now you're going to bring your legs wide in Upavista Kanasta. You'll use the wall. Be right on the center of the back of the thigh. Knees are facing up toward the ceiling. Just bring your fingertips back behind you to begin with. Be on the side of the foot. So I'm on the inner edge of the heel, inner edge of the mound of the big toe. And I'm drawing the little toes back toward me. So it's a Tadasana foot, but the whole foot is not on the wall like this. You're pressing as if you were standing in Tadasana. And then bend the elbows. Get that curve to the upper back. Lift the chest. Stay on the fingertips. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, move the thighs down. So thighs are descending. Backs of the knees are descending. Calves are lengthening. Here, if it's difficult for you to sit up, take a pillow underneath yourself. So you might have a cushion from a couch. You might have the pillows from couch or, a, or the bed. Use that to have a little bit more height. And now we're going to come into that Pavrita action, or Parshva action for here. Take one hand behind you. You can have the other hand at the wall. Use that hand at the wall, turning to the left. Keep the knees facing up toward the ceiling. Inhale, move the thighs down and lengthen the spine up. Exhale, turn. So here you're bringing some circulation to the back body, to the whole spinal column from your lower back up. And then come back to the center. Take the other hand on the wall, be on the fingertips. Release the inner knees down, inner thighs down. Lengthening up, exhale, turn. You can also take your hand on your outer leg. So see what works better for you, depending on <coughs> your mobility, and your practice. Roll your shoulder back. Coming back, let's do the first side again. You can take hold of the thigh, walk the other hand back. First, establish that firm, steady, stable, seated position. Descend the thighs, inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. Now look over your right shoulder. So your neck may be stiff from sitting a long time. So just let the neck come back. Keep that, so I'm turning toward my left side. My right side is moving back. And now coming to the other side, take that outer thigh again. Be on the fingertips. Descend the thighs, inner knees. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn. So feel the turning also through the abdominal area as you exhale. And then turn. Turn the head, turn the neck. One side may be different, so I'm turning now to the right si to the left side. And I want to keep the opposite shoulder moving down, so not lifting. And then release. Bring the legs back to the wall. Just sit in Dandasana. Press the feet into the wall. Bring the arms back. Lift up through the chest. Get a little bit of concavity to the back. And then come forward toward the wall. Take your hands on the wall. Reach the hands up the wall. 
So you're lengthening the lower back, you're descending the hips and the thighs. And just look down at your legs. Look down toward the floor, soft breath. You can go down a little bit lower, take the ankles. First lift up and lengthen, bend the elbows. Keep that concavity of the back, lift up, thighs descending. And then Urdhva Hastasana, bring the arms up and take the hands down. All right, at this point, you're going to come up. And you'll either have a chair or a desk there. You'll have some sort of countertop. So you're going to first take the hands, either on the chair or on the desk, and extend the arms, extend back through the side trunk. Press the heels down, lift up through the backs of the thighs, lifting the knees. Keep the head relaxed between the arms. And then come up. So on the desk, or some counter, I'm using the chair here, you can take your hands, take your elbows back on that ledge, lengthen the upper arms, open the armpit area, you can keep the fingers pressing against one another. Let your head rest on that desk or that chair. Thighs moving back. So use the movement of the thighs and the hips moving back. Lengthen the lower back. At the same time, you're opening through the armpit area and you're creating some mobility in the shoulders. Head is rested. Observe your abdomen, so not dropping the abdomen down and concaving the lower back, but draw the abdomen up, fill the lower back, and extend the tailbone away. And then come forward. You can do one more with the arms. <clears throat> if you've been sitting for a long time or you've been working the computer or what have you, We'll just free up this area a little bit more. So bring your head to the, to the chair or to the desk or to your bed. Take your arms behind you. Lengthen the arms right through the arm, uh, from the shoulders to the hands. And lift the arms up. So as you do this, you want to bring the shoulder blades down, back ribs into the body, and then just let the arms lift any amount that you can. Lifting up, as you lift up, move the shoulders down. Move the skin and the flesh of the top of the upper back down. Back ribs down, and bring your arms over. Change the cross on the fingers. Inhale, lift the arms. Getting that nice extension from your shoulder all the way up through the hands. Lift the arms up. Face is relaxed, neck is relaxed. So you may only be able to take your arms here, but getting that rotation, that external rotation on the arms will help you to lift the arms more. Okay? So you have a bed or you have a chair. I know you probably already have one chair. You don't need a chair. This is a bed. Pretend this is your bed. <laughs> So you're going to lay down on your bed, and you'll keep your knees bent. Slide your hips down. And then let yourself come down a little bit. So you're sliding down until you're on your, kind of your waist. If you have some pillows, you can bring the pillows down on the floor, support your head, keep the knees bent, tailbone moving down, and bring your arms over your head. Okay, you can stay in this position, or you can bring your legs into Baddha Konasana, 
knees out to the side, which is difficult for me to do since I have this chair rail right now. But since you'll probably be on a bed, you can either straighten the legs, you can bend the knees out to the side, you can cross the legs in cross leg position. So I've come over the edge of the bed, releasing my head down. And then if you have a few pillows, you can have the pillow under your head as you need it. If you have any kind of neck issue, then you can have the pillow under the head and be more on the back of your head. Okay, so you'll figure out which is the best place to be, either on the crown of the head or the back of the head. And depending on how much support you have there, you can take a blanket. Usually they have a blanket in the room, thighs descending down. Or you may just be practicing at home in a small space. So if you have props, then you take those props. So when you're traveling, it's really a wonderful thing to be able to do an inversion. This is a supported inversion, so it's very relaxing. So you can relax the breath, relax the face, the jaw, change the cross on your arms. So I started with the knees bent. So you can keep the knees bent. And as you do that, continue to lengthen the lower back if you feel any strain. All right, we're going to come up now. So for you, you're going to lift your head and you'll slide back on the bed, or you can just completely slide down. I'm not going to slide down on these chairs because they're a little bit more unstable. So I'm coming back up. OK, and now I'm going to cross the legs and just come into a gentle twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, turn. Stay with the breath. Keep that breath passive and relaxed. And then release. Come back to the other side. All right, I'm coming out of the chair now. Now, of course, there's many things that you can do in a small space. I'm just showing you a few things. I'm assuming that maybe you've been traveling and your shoulders, your neck stiff, the back is stiff, and you need some mobility for your hips and a rest for your legs. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back down on the floor and cross the legs. Let the fronts of the legs lengthen. Release your arms out to the side. So you can bring yourself close enough to the wall that you can feel your knees at the wall. And from there, you can lengthen the legs to the wall. So make sure that the pelvis is adjusted so the buttocks moving down. You're getting elongation through the lower back. And with my knees at the wall, I can lengthen the fronts of the thighs. Just staying there. Adjust your shoulders. Release your arms. Coming back to the breath. Allow the breath to relax. And then just change the crust on the legs. So coming into Sukhasana, bringing the feet underneath your thighs, press the knees to the wall, lengthen the front thighs, the quadriceps. <clears throat> Buttocks is more active so that you can open the space in the front groin. And then just be there.
and then you'll bring your feet onto the floor, roll onto your side, and then sit back in Sukhasana, cross leg position. Just bring your hands onto your knees, and your eyes closed, and just observe your breath. Let your breath be long, slow, soft, and smooth. Feeling that the front body and the back body are parallel to one another. You can feel the weight on your sitting bones. Let your knees and thighs descend. Relaxing your shoulders down. Lifting from the back of the head. Feel the crown of the head lifting. Softening your face. Softening your breath. Letting go of any tension in the face and the neck. Around the eyes and into the jaw. And then slowly open your eyes. It was a short practice, quiet practice, just one that you can do at any time, morning or evening. Enjoy. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. This was a short practice, but a practice that could help you release in the neck, in the shoulders, give a little bit of stimulation to the back and lengthen the back and mobility to the hips, which if you've been traveling, this is a good practice to move into all the joints and not only create some opening, but some extension and some relaxation. All right. So if you would like to look at some other things that you can do, I've got some classes here on inversions, which if you're doing shirshasana, headstand, shoulder stand, you can do those. So just take a look first, and if you've been practicing, then you know what to do. If you haven't been practicing, take a look, and you can add that to the sequence, okay? All right, nice to have you practice with me. We'll see you soon. Namaste.